In December of 2016, Lee Melton received a General Railway Signal SA-1 searchlight signal as a gift. From that point on, he was bit with the signal bug. This video documented the erection of that signal in his yard. Standing a signal this size required a large hole to be dug in the ground. Any time you dig in the ground, it always remember to contact the local utility offices and have them come out and mark for buried utilities. We started by marking out the area where the signal was planned to go. Originally it was thought we would need a 3 foot square hole, but after further research it was decided that an 18 inch square hole would be sufficient. Here, Lee is measuring for the new hole size. I then started to cut the perimeter and remove the top layer of grass. We dug the hole so the bottom would be 6 inches below the freeze line for our area. Once the hole was finished, I turned my attention to the box form we would use to raise the top of the concrete above the ground. I did this with 2x6s nailed together for easy removal after the concrete set. I left the legs of the box long so it could support itself over the hole. I used shims made from anything I had laying around. The bricks were used to hold the form in place, and then one last check with the level to make sure nothing had moved. Prior to starting this project, Lee and I discussed whether to use bagged concrete or have it delivered from the local concrete company. After calculating the cost, effort, and time, we opted to order the concrete from the local concrete company. The minimum amount we could order was one yard, but ultimately we only needed less than half of that. I screened the top of the concrete level with the form using a piece of scrap wood we had laying around. We used one inch bolts that we embedded into the wet concrete. We made a template for the signal base by standing the base on this piece of plywood and spray painting the bolt pattern. Then it was a matter of drilling a one inch hole for the bolts and putting the bolts loosely in this template. This allowed us to uh, really make sure that the bolts were set well inside the concrete. One last screen to smooth out the excess and we left it to cure for several days. The following week, the form was removed and we stood the mast into place. I put washers on each of the bolts before we stood the mast, and this left a small gap between the base and the concrete. Uh, checked to see if the mast was plumb, and it was within a small margin of error, but we thought it was good enough. The bed of Lee's pickup seemed like a comfortable platform to work from. For the top signal, we mounted the bracket first. Once the bracket was secure, we came back and mounted the signal to the bracket. Unfortunately, the bottom signal was so rusted onto its bracket that we actually had to mount the entire signal head in one piece. And this seemed like a good time to clean the inside and outside of the glass lenses. I slid the mechanisms into their housing and then began the wiring process.
we encased the wiring in flexible conduit. This left it looking neat and professional. It was run under the ground to the garage, where the control panel would be located. Here, Victor is wiring the toggle switches to the automotive flasher relays. And that's it! Uh, we finished by aiming the signals to point down the long driveway, and during our weekly model train club meetings, the signal is on for the enjoyment of all of the visitors. Uh, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of my videos. And don't forget to share this video with your friends.